Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going to talk about topological sorting. This is a very common and very useful algorithm. First off, what is topological sorting? In computer science, a topological sort or topological ordering of a directed graph is a linear ordering of its vertices such that for every directed edge uv from vertex u to vertex v, u comes before v in the ordering. What can we do with this algorithm? There are a lot of very useful places or applications that are actually using topological sorting. For example, build systems, either you use Gradle or Ant. How does your program build? How does the build tools manage the dependencies? For example, if you want to build class A, you need to build class B first, right? So in the very complex build systems, how does it know which package, which objects to be built first? That is topological sorting. And also there is task scheduling. How can you schedule tasks in the very distributed systems, right? Which task should be built first? Which task should get scheduled first? And then there's also school class prerequisites. For example, for us computer science students, you might need to take, say, for example, basic introductory classes for computer science first before you can take advanced data structures and algorithm classes. These are the prerequisite classes that, that you need to fulfill before you can take more advanced classes. These are just a few applications where topological sorting can be used. Of course, there are many, many other places that is being heavily used. With that said, that just means this this algorithm that we're going to talk about today is very useful. Any conditions that we need to be aware of for topological sorting? Of course, there are. Let's look at this. A topological ordering is possible if and only if the graph has no directed cycles. That means this is a DAG, meaning a directed acyclic graph. The keywords here are only, no directed cycles. A, deck. a topological ordering is only possible if this graph has no directed cycles. In other words, if there are directed cycles, we cannot find a topological ordering because there is a cycle, right? Let's take a look at one example. We'll see what that means. Suppose we're given this, the graph on the left, we're given this graph. What that means is, say, if this is class diagram, if you want to take the class number three, you have to take class number two and zero first before you can take class three. That's what it means. So we're trying to find if it's possible that we can take all of these eight classes. Is it possible? Or in other words, we'll first figure out whether this is a valid DAG, directed acyclic graph. Let's take a look. No, it's not. Why this is not a valid deck? Because there is a cycle. Let's take a look. So say if we want to take class three, we have to take class five first. And so if we want to take class five, we have to take class seven first. And if we want to take class seven, we have to take class three first. It's not possible that we can take these three classes because it depends on each other. You cannot take three because you didn't take five. You cannot take five because you didn't take seven. You cannot take seven because you didn't take three. There is a cycle in this graph, which means this is not a valid deck. In other words, it also means we cannot find a valid topological ordering of this graph. All right, I hope that makes sense. Any deck that has at least one topological ordering, and there are algorithms known for constructing a topological ordering of any DAG in linear time. So pay attention here, there is at least one topological ordering. So that could be multiple valid topological ordering. And there are algorithms, people study for this, people spend a lot of time studying for this. There are multiple algorithms that can construct a topological, a valid topological ordering of any DAG in linear time. And today we'll go through one of the algorithms, which is Kahn's algorithm, invented by a computer scientist in 1962, and there is a DFS, depth first search. If you want to study the DFS approach for topological ordering, definitely hit subscribe button and stay tuned. I'll have another video to cover that algorithm. But today we'll focus on the Kahn algorithm, which I think is very cool. Let's take a look at this example. This is a different one, and this is a valid DAG. For any valid DAG, we learn that there are at least one valid topological ordering. So for example, this one, one of the valid topological ordering is we can visually go through this from left to right and top to bottom. So left to right, we always go left to right and then top to bottom. So that is two, zero, one, right? And then three, four, right? We have finished two, zero, one, and then we can take class three and then four. 
Then we can finish since we took three and one. Both prerequisites for five have been taken, so we can take five and seven as well, we, since we took three and zero already, right? So seven and then six. So one of the valid topological ordering of this graph is two, zero, one, three, four, five, seven, six. Of course, it's not unique. For example, this, we can have another valid topological ordering by the smallest numbered available vertex first. For example, this one, which means zero, one, two, right? The first one is finished. Which one can we go next? That is three. This is the next smallest available. And then four, and then five, six, and seven, right? We can take either six or seven, but since this one, we want to go with the smallest numbered available vertex first. So we'll put six before seven. Do we have anything more? Yes, we do. We can go from the fewest edges first. Which one has the fewest edge? Two. Two has only one. But for these two vertices, they have two. So we'll go, we'll start from this one first, two and zero, one. And then which one is the next that has the fewest edges? That is four, right? Four has only one, but for three, it has three edges connected with vertex three. So we'll do this, two, zero, one, then four, three. After that, which one do we have? We have five, five has two edges and then seven and six. I hope this makes sense. We still even have more valid topological ordering. We can go from largest numbered available vertex first. These three, which one has the largest number? That is two. So two, then we can have zero. So after taking two and zero, three has three's prerequisites are two and zero have been taken. So we can take three and then we can take seven right? Because seven has two prerequisites. One is three, one is zero. So both of them have been taken, so we can take seven. Why do we take seven? Because we want to go with the largest number of available vertex first. So we take seven, and then we take one, because we cannot take five, because one is a prerequisite for five. So we take one, and at that moment, we can take either four and five, but we want to take the largest available vertex first. So we take five, and then we take four, in the last, we take six, right? Okay, and then and this is not the end. There is still another valid topological ordering. This is a very arbitrary one, so it doesn't go through with any one of these, which means we can just arbitrarily return one. This is just an example to show there are multiple valid topological ordering for a valid DAC. The thing to take away from this is for any valid DAC, there is at least one valid topological ordering. Otherwise, it's not a valid DAC. As I mentioned before, today we're going to cover Kahn's algorithm. How does this algorithm come into play that helps us to solve to find the valid topological ordering? We'll start off with a list of start nodes, which means they are the, for these nodes, they don't have any incoming edges and we'll put them into a set, we'll just call it a start set. At least one such node should exist in the non-empty acyclic graph. Otherwise, we have nothing to start with, which means we cannot find a valid topological ordering. And the result is an empty list that will contain the sorted elements. This is the pseudocode for the rest of the algorithm. So we'll just start with start set. As long as the start set is not empty, we'll keep iterating through this part of the code. For every time we'll take a node n, from the start set, and then we add the end to the tail of the result. And then we'll go through the edges. We take one edge out of the edge list. We check if for each node M, this is a different node M, with an edge E from N to M. N is the one that we took from the start set, and M is the node that we're checking. If there is such an edge, we'll mark E as removed, which means we have visited this edge, or in other words, we have taken the prerequisite classes. After we do this multiple times, or at least once, if M does not have any incoming edges anymore, that means we have visited those edges. So we'll just add this M into this start set. So we'll continue this loop until we have exhausted every single vertex in this start set. At that moment, we should have removed all of the edges. After we break out of this while loop, we'll check if there is still any edges. If that's the case, we'll just return false because there is no way we can build a topological, a valid topological ordering out of this graph. Otherwise, we can just return result, which is a one of the valid topological ordering. 
I hope this makes sense. It's invented by Kahn in 1962, a very classic computer science program. Now let's take a look at one example. We know these three vertices, they don't have any incoming edges. Or if we think of them as the classes, they are the most basic freshman classes. You don't need to have any prerequisite. These are two, zero, one. So we'll call them as, remember, this is the algorithm we just discussed. So we'll put the start nodes into a hash set, which is called start set. So zero, one, two. This is our start set. Result is an empty list at the beginning. Then we'll start the algorithm. We'll loop through the start set. First, we'll take zero out, out of the start set. Then we have zero to three. We can remove this edge. We'll mark this edge as removed. Next, we have zero to seven. We can mark zero to seven as removed. There is nothing else that we can do. So we'll just continue beginning from the start of the while loop. So next element, next vertex that we can take out is one. So we'll take one out of the start set. We'll mark one to five as removed. Next, we can mark one to four as removed. But at this moment, we'll think about four. This node four, it doesn't have any other incoming edges now, which means we can add, we can take this class number four. We can add this four into start set, right? So what we'll do is we'll just add this four into this start set. Okay, so we have one more vertex in start set. Next, we'll take out two. So two has an incoming edge to where? To three. So we'll mark this one as removed. At this moment, what we noticed is three. So three doesn't have any incoming edges now. We're going to add three into start set, right? So we have three into start set. Next, what are we going to do? We'll continue to take more. What's the next one? We'll take three. So three has quite a few edges going out, which means it's a prerequisite class for five, six, and seven. So we'll visit every single one of them in order. So first we mark three to five as removed. Again, let's take a look for vertex five, we have removed both of its two incoming edges. One is from three, the other is from one, which means five doesn't have any incoming edges. So we'll add five into this start set. We'll continue. Next, we mark three to seven as removed. Then we'll take a look at seven. Does seven have any other incoming edges that we haven't visited? We haven't removed? No, which means we can add node seven into start set. Okay, next, We'll visit three to six, three to six. This is the one that we're going to visit or in other words, we'll remove this edge. But can we put six into start set? No, because we haven't visited four yet. So next step is we'll take out four. We take four out of the start set. Then we can mark six to four as visited. Okay, at this moment, we have taken both prerequisite classes for six, which is three and four. So at this moment, six doesn't have any incoming edges. So we'll add six into this start set. All right, perfect. So what do we have that we still haven't visited in the start set, which is five, six, and seven. Let's do that. So we take out five, but at this moment, all of the edges you see in this graph have been removed, which means we have visited them. So no edges remaining. We can quickly break out the loop, nothing to be removed. So we're done with five. How about six? No edges, same thing. How about seven? No edges, okay. So in the end, we have this valid topological ordering. We're done. Remember, this is just one of the valid topological ordering. Time complexity of this algorithm is big O of V plus E. V stands for number of vertices. E stands for number of edges in the graph. That means this is a linear algorithm. I hope this walkthrough makes sense to you. And fortunately on lead code, there, is, there are two lead code problems, which gives us a chance to practice this topological ordering, this kind of algorithm very vividly. So let's go take a look over there. All right, here's the lead code problem that I just mentioned that can help us practice topological sort. First, let's take a look at the problem description. So basically we'll understand how we can apply the concepts that we just learned into a real actual problem. It's very practical. There is a total of num causes cost that you have to take labeled from zero to num causes minus one. Say for example here, the total number of causes is two. So there are a total of two causes that you have to take and they are labeled as zero and one. And there is another parameter here, prerequisites. What does this mean? This is a 2D array. If you take a look at the method signature here, this is a 2D array. It means for example, 
if you want to take cost one, you should have finished cost zero first. That's what it means. So that's what it means. So basically we want to understand how we can use the simplest form to represent a graph, which is basically a 2D array. Let's quickly recall what we went through is Khan's algorithm. First step is we want to find all of the start nodes that we can put into a hash set to begin with. So how can we do that? What we can do is we can walk through this given prerequisite and then we'll build another array to hold the incoming degree. If the incoming degree of a particular cost is zero, that means it doesn't have any prerequisite. So we can put those nodes as the start nodes into a hash set. There are a total of n causes, right? So we can have an in degree like this, a 1D array causes like this. We can just walk through this prerequisite. Let me copy this to the array. So say what we need to check here is in degree. We will just do a calculation. What we want to cap, what we want to add up is which causes are using this one as its prerequisite. For example, we're given this prerequisite, which means in order to take class one, you have to you have to have finished class zero first. That means class one, right? Class one, which has an index of zero, has a prerequisite. Here, the in degree is just helping us keep track of how many prerequisite this particular class has. For example, this one, again, this one we have to finish class zero first before we can take class one. So we don't really care which particular classes that we have to finish, but we just keep track of the count. So we have a simple 1D array here in degree. Here we use pre zero, that's the first index. So remember all of these indices is always the length of every single array inside this 2D array is always two. We'll always use the first one to calculate the in degree. So see how many prerequisites there are for this class. After that has been calculated, remember, we'll have a set called zero degree, which is basically the start set, hash set. And then we'll just go through this in degree. Num causes i plus plus. If in degree i equals zero, which means this is the most fundamental class that doesn't have any prerequisite, then we can just simply take it. Add i. Remember, this i is the index because every single class is labeled from zero to n minus one. All right, good. Next thing, we want to check whether this is a valid deck, right? Basically, is it possible that we can take all of the classes? Okay. That means we need to have at least one element in the zero degree hash set, right? Otherwise, there's no single class that you can take before you don't have any prerequisite classes taken, right? So we'll check is empty. If that is the case, we can just directly return false here. If that is not the case, okay, then we can continue. While zero degree, this is basically the start set as we just went through is empty while this one is not empty we can just keep pulling this is a hash set we can just use an iterator zero degree iterator and then we can just uh, we will get this one cause it next and then we can remove this cost from this zero degree hash set at this point we want to visit the edges, right? We want to visit all of the edges that have this cost as a prerequisite. All right, let's do that. Prerequisite and then. So if cost equals, which one is a prerequisite? The second one, the second element in the index, right? So we want to check if pre one equals this one. This is the prerequisite classes that we are checking. If that is the case, we are going to remove that edge. So we'll just do in degree pre one minus one. In degree pre zero. Pre zero is the class that can be taken only if pre one has been done, right? So we'll just minus, we'll, we'll subtract one in degree from this one. 
I hope that makes sense, which means back to the slides that we just went through, which means we have removed this edge. Okay. And then one more thing that we can check is if after one round or several rounds of subtracting, this one becomes zero, which means we have taken all of the prerequisite classes of this one, then we can take this one. So we'll just add this one into zero degree, which is this one, right? This is a hash set, so add. Because we have finished taking all of the prerequisite classes of this class, so then this class can be safely taken. Okay, that's what it means. So after all of this, after we finished visiting all of the elements, eventually all of the vertices or all of the classes will be added into the zero degree. And then all of the edges or all of the incoming edges will be removed. So the zero degree will be empty in the end. At that moment, what we want to do is we want to check if there are still any edges that hasn't been removed and back into this context, into this code, we basically want to check if in degree, if there is still any in degree that is not zero. If this in degree is still not zero, that means still we haven't finished taking any prerequisite classes for this one, right? That means we cannot take all classes, we'll just return false. Otherwise, we can just return true. This is how we transform the Kahn's algorithm that we just went through into the actual code. So after we went through Kahn's algorithm and finished doing cost schedule one, we can easily add a couple more lines into this algorithm, and then we can make cost schedule two accepted, right? Okay, then let me just uh, copy this one into here. Method signature is the same, but here the return is different. So after copying this one, what we can do is say here, just modify a couple lines, then this problem could be accepted. In this, the return method signature is an empty array if it doesn't exist. So what we'll do is we'll just return an empty array here. Then here we'll initialize this result. Order new, we'll just call it order num causes. Remember, whenever we take one element from the start set, we'll just add this one. We'll have another variable, we'll just call it to zero. We'll just add this one and increment it. Cost. We'll just add this cost into this order and then increment i. And then here, we'll just return an empty array as well. But otherwise, we'll just return order. That's it. Now let's hit submit and see. All right, this is also accepted. This is just one of the many known popular algorithms, again, Kahn's algorithms to solve topological ordering problems. I hope this video does help you make sense of this problem. And for the DFS approach of solving topological problem, I'll have a follow up video to do that. So if you want to study that, definitely hit subscribe button. And if you find this video useful to help you understand topological sorting using Kahn's algorithm, please do me a favor and hit the like button. Just destroy it. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel as we continue to go through a lot of interesting interview or lead code, data structure, or AWS problems. I would really appreciate that. And if you have any questions, comments, just leave me down below in the comment section. See you guys in the next video.